What is going on Bulls Nation? Welcome back again for another video. So today, you know, I was sitting around and thinking to myself, was there any positives to these injuries? And I'm sure there is, right? I mean, everything happens for a reason and these injuries do suck. But then again, at the same time, we, we found out some things about the Bulls that maybe we wouldn't have found out if not for these injuries. And these injuries, keep in mind, it happened, I would say, at the right time. Because even after all these adversities from the Bulls, we're still sitting at top of the East, looking good as ever. We're beating the teams that we're supposed to beat. And I just, you know, found out about things about the Chicago Bulls. You know, when the, 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 when the season started... I mean, all of us, we know that the starting five was pretty solid. I mean, you got DeMar DeRozan, Vooch, Zach Levine with Patrick Williams and Lonzo Ball. That is one hell of a starting five right there, regardless if you're a Bulls fan or not. The biggest question back then was the bench. We did not know what we have depth-wise. Kobe White was injured, with his, you know, dealing with his shoulder injury. We got Javante Green, who we saw last year. He, we, we know he's like a... a a pretty good energy guy, you know, pretty good defensively. And after that, we got Derek Jones Jr., who didn't really see much of the floor when he first came in here. We got Tony Bradley, which we were a little bit high on in the beginning when, when you know, we, when, you know, we need a backup big. And then after that, it's, we got Alex Caruso, you know, we, we liked him, you know, he, in the beginning of the season, he, he was doing, showing some flashes defensively here and there. And he was, he was really good. And then the injuries started piling up, you know, COVID, starting with Patrick Williams, went down and we replaced him with Javante Green right away. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought we were doomed because we didn't have a power forward. I even thought that Patrick Williams, a power forward, is kind of pushing it. I know the NBA is different now. You know, everything's about small ball and all that stuff. But I don't even know if that was going to fly, you know, in the NBA. We didn't. Even, we still don't know because Patrick Williams went down, you know, five games in and and all that. But now it looks like it does. And why? Because Javante Green, what at like six four maybe, in a given you know, at six three perhaps, is holding his own at the power forward position for the Chicago Bulls. I wouldn't have known that if Patrick Williams didn't go down. I knew he was. Uh, you know, a pretty good player. I know he's a good energy guy. I did not know that we do have a Swiss Army knife in our disposal, meaning he could play and guard multiple positions. He can play in the three-point area. He can knock down threes. He he's shown that this past like five games. He's pretty good offensively if given the chance. You know, uh, if you can control him, he's 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 pretty good. And defensively, there's not much to say about Javante Green defensively. That guy can guard. I would say one to five. He can guard a point guard because of his size. He can guard big guys because he's pretty strong, even at his, you know, at current weight at his and his size. We're talking about like a 6'3 guard here. Last night against the Atlanta Hawks, just boxed out Danilo Gallinari, grabbing that key rebound and, you know, sinking down the two, two free throws. This guy has been a godsend for the Chicago Bulls. Can you imagine if this guy, when he was not around, we felt it. The Bulls felt it. We struggled. I think we lost. And I'm not just saying it's because of Javante Green, but not having Patrick Williams, Javante Green, and DJ at that point was was rough. It was a rough stretch. And, uh, you know, trust me, I've seen rough stretches from the Bulls. I mean, I was, I was watching them when Eddie Robinson was our top scorer. So, you know, talking about rough. It was a different kind of rough when they all went down because you have this expectations. We were rolling back then. And then they all came down and we were just like, oh man, here we go. We're going to be six seed. And again, there's I, I, I fully trust this team. It doesn't matter what seeding we do have. But, you know, as a pride, you want your team to be at their best. You know, you want they're not even re really being recognized nationwide, you know, with the national media and all that stuff. And, and it doesn't help that we keep on losing to good teams. But, with that being said, even with all that injuries, we're sitting at top of the East. It couldn't have happened at the you know best time because they are slated to come back soon before the playoffs starts. Perfect time to get acclimated, get our chemistry back together. We survive COVID. We survive all these injuries. When they come back, we're just going to be better. The Bulls cannot go worse. 
when all these we we keep on saying hey you know our defensive uh, efficiency went dropped down from nine to what twenty two or even twenty seven, and being at that even at twenty seven def- uh, efficiency we're still number one in the East why because we can outscore teams something that we never saw in the Thibs era in the Thibs era we're all about defense and and that's great I love defense but you gotta score too right now we can score with very minimal defense you know at twenty seven like I said. Imagine if we go back to ninth and scoring the way we do. My God. My goodness. Now, I may be hyping this up because I'm a Bulls fan, but hey, speaking facts here, we're number one in the East. Another revelation, I guess, I guess another good thing about these injuries is the emergence of Ayo Desumu. This guy went from, you know, being a steal uh, as a number, uh, like a second pick to most people saying, man, this might be the future of the Bulls. This might, and, and I don't disagree. I love Io's game. This kid has the composure. He started off as a backup, but Don, Billy Donovan was forced to play this guy because of the way he plays. He just, he's just hounding everyone, just his energy, his defense. He wasn't even showing his offense back then. And we Bulls fans, I mean, here in Chicago, man, you show hustle, we would love you forever. I mean, Nazir Muhammad. Almost had a statue because of pushing LeBron James and Kirk Heinrich, you know, the, all those hard falls that he did. We love those guys, the grit. And Ayo has that. But what Ayo has as well is not he's just great, gritty defensively, he has offensive game. You see him dishing out double digits assist for what, like four straight games? It's hitting big shots after big shots. This kid, I'm telling you, is the future of Chicago. And I felt like he wouldn't have shined had Lonzo not been injured. He would have been, we would have looked at him as a really good defensive player. Maybe have a spark here and there. But now, man, I I, I love Lonzo Ball. Don't get me wrong. And not no, no one can replace his, his size, defensive awareness, and all that stuff. His court vision. But it was a blessing in disguise that he got injured now and we got what we saw in Io. And another one I would say is DJ. DJ was here with us at the beginning of the season, not beginning of the season, but before when Laurie got traded. I think that's the beginning of the season, if I'm not mistaken. But he wasn't getting used. Not until, you know, we went down Patrick Williams and then we eventually got to use him. Again, we have a Javante Green in our hands. Long, athletic defender who can guard both big and small. We went from having no bench to, in my opinion, one of the deepest team right now. And if you're not a Chicago fan, you don't know these names, you would think that, what are you talking about? You're talking about, you know, Derrick Jones? He's just a dunker. Or who's Javante Green? Who's Io? But all of us here in Chicago, Chicago fans, you know what I'm talking about. We got, And now we got Kobe who's scoring 20 a night outside of last night. We And then picking up Tristan Thompson? We went from... Do we even have a bench to now one of the, I would say, the deepest team in the league right now? And people doesn't know about it because, you know, mainstream media doesn't talk about it. But it doesn't matter. All of us here in Chicago, can we bolster our bench a little bit more? Sure. Can we get a, Can we use a power forward? Of course. But if we go to the playoffs right now with what we have, I am not guaranteeing it. But I'm confident. I wouldn't be surprised that we can beat any team at any given night with this lineup let me know in the comments what you guys think about my assessment am i just looking at this with rose colored glasses <laughs> am i just being insane here insane like a bulls fan but i thought that these this injuries just revealed a lot of stuff that maybe we wouldn't have had not those injuries maybe we still win games but what is the difference if they got injured or not we would still be in the position that we're in now the difference is that we wouldn't probably wouldn't have known what we got, and these guys wouldn't have got the reps like Io did. And now he has the confidence because he started every game since those point guards went down. But let me know in the comments how you guys feel. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't done so, done so, please subscribe to the channel, especially if you're a Bulls fans. You know, I would love to interact with you. Love, you know, I love to meet every Bulls fans out here. Like this video if um, you know, you're a Bulls fan as well. It really does help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.